What the heck is wrong with this thing? I can't get it to work. Pig! Pig, come over here! I need your help! Uh, yes, Mr. Sock, Sunny, sir? How can I be of service? It's this Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania trailer. I can't get it to work. It looks like this. Hey, well, I can see your dilemma. Don't worry. I can fix this in a jiffy. Now, let's see. Ah, oh, there you go. That's a lot better. It is indeed. Thank you, pig. You've really made my day. Anytime. Can this day get any better? I've made more coffee, sir. Dude, we gotta talk about this. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm back with another trailer breakdown. And if you guys are wondering why the hat, because hats off to our latest recruits, Pig Hambone at IT. So, that's pretty much it. Let's get right into the breakdown for the Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania trailer. We start off with a shot of San Francisco, which is where Scott Lang is from. And thank you, Marvel, for both the regular-sized trailer and the ant-sized trailer of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Thank you very much, Marvel. And then we get another shot of Scott walking down this pavement, and it's actually pretty busy. And not only is it busy, but people are walking by him, and they seem pretty surprised. So, A... Everyone by now knows that Ant-Man is one of the few heroes that helped snap everyone back into existence, even though that was the Hulk, but, I mean, he was part of the Avengers Endgame team that did not get snapped who helped to bring everybody back. So, also, because of this, Ant-Man has built up quite the ego for himself, because as he's walking down this pavement, he says to himself, I used to ask myself a lot of questions. Scott, you're an ex-con, which refers to his criminal days. How are you an Avenger? And then we get a, a shot of Baskin Robbins. And employees are applauding Scott, and he's even getting his picture taken. Scott's shaking hands with Dale, his old boss. I think that was his name. And if you look over Dale's shoulder, you can see that Scott... Lang is named employee of the stinking century? I mean, it, it doesn't say stinking, but I mean, dude, that long? Man! And I think Ant-Man also has a new suit here. It's just, me, the chest plating looks a little bit different. Because what's a superhero movie without a new suit? I mean, basically, all of the superheroes, except for Hulk and Thor basically got a new suit. I mean, Captain America, Iron Man, and now Ant-Man, and, I mean, especially Spider-Man. I mean, heck. Lang gives a high five to a kid on a bench with an Ant-Man backpack. So, I mean, yeah, this clarifies that the guy is pretty famous, but not as much as the next scene. The kid looks back at Ant-Man like, what just happened? And then Hope Van Dyne is escorted out of a very snazzy... I think this is some kind of an SUV. And then Scott and Hope are walking down a stinking red carpet? Man, these people are famous! I mean, I know that he saved the world and all and blipped everybody back, but I mean, again, that was the Hulk. And I mean, how come, like, none of the other heroes that helped bring everybody back got this recognition? All because he wrote a dang book about what happened in probably his point of view. So therefore, everyone now knows exactly what he went through and what kind of a hero he is. And as this whole sequence is happening, Scott says that in his case, being an Avenger doesn't make sense. But everywhere he goes, people tell him the exact same thing. Scott gets a coffee at a coffee shop. And then an elderly gentleman yells out to him, Thank you, Spider-Man. So, <laughs> yeah, it's obvious that these bug heroes have a low esteem of recognition. And Scott doesn't say anything, he just awkwardly leaves. We then see that 
the Van Dyne and Pym's home has been not only relocated, but I think it's also been somewhat refurbished because, I mean, look how shiny and, I mean, the amount of gold on the building. I mean, look at this. Gold trimming here. Gold on the porch. I mean, seriously. Well, I mean, hey, at least the characters are being made up for when it comes to how they were treated in the first Ant-Man and the Wasp film. We then get Scott, Dr. Hank Pym, and Janet Van Dyne in Hank's lab, and Cassie Lang says to her dad that people still need help, and that's why she made this. Now, what is this? She turns it on, and as Scott is looking it over and wondering to himself, how the heck did my daughter build this? I mean, well, it's probably not that big of a surprise to him because, you know, he's a super genius when it comes to crime and even technology. She says that it's a satellite for deep space, but instead of for deep space, it's quantum. Now, why the heck are you doing this? I mean, you're literally inviting all of the quantum realm to your doorstep! Oh my gosh. And then Janet asks, you're sending a signal into the quantum realm? I mean, I understand Cassie. She wants to help people, but seriously, Janet has been down there for how many years? So she knows what is in the quantum realm. And I mean, just... Cassie, why? I swear, God save the young Avengers. So then the beacon of light starts raising up out of the portal, and can we just address that this design looks vaguely similar to the portal that Loki had in 2012? I mean, I'm just noticing that. And then everybody starts looking at it like, what the stink is happening? Then Janet says to Cassie, turn it off now, because, I mean, if the quantum realm is receiving a signal from Earth, then they can find their way to Earth and do whatever they want. But it was too late. The orb then surges into like this huge energy wave, knocking everyone right off their feet. And then the steel here starts to bend right here and here. So, I mean, only one thing comes into mind here. Dr. Otto Octavius' fusion reactor. And so there's probably a bit of fusion in this energy wave. And also Loki's energy wave when he arrived to Earth. Oh my gosh. I mean, all that metal was just, just like this, bending and buckling. So yeah, there is a lot of energy here. And more hinting that... These two designs, Cassie's seek into the quant signal to the quantum realm and Loki's portal are vaguely similar designs. And then people just start getting dang blasted sucked into the quantum realm. I mean, even objects. And oh my gosh. So yeah, this is trouble. We then get a Marvel Studios logo, which again, this is owned by Marvel Studios, not me. But Instead of a classic red background, we get some sort of a cosmic background with like a whole bunch of nebulas and clouds, but they're all like welding together. And then Ant-Man and Cassie are in the quantum realm, and holy cow, portals are opening up vaguely similar to the holes that were opening up on Sakaar, so, I mean, maybe there are, like, a lot of portals here for sure, but I have one question for you. Why are there so many Loki references in this trailer? Probably because of the villain. Cassie looks around and asks, where are we? Because she obviously has no idea what she did, and, I mean, seriously, I mean, again, wanting to help people, whether that be aliens, individual small quantum beings, humans. I mean, but she didn't think that this would happen. Get another shot of the quantum realm, and my guess is because this is, this actually looks like a mining 
place. Kind of like Lamentis, only it kind of looks like a combination of Lamentis and the, uh, the mine from Wrinkle in Time. And then a robot, a human with a sword, and this hooded black figure, which kind of looks like Ronin from Avengers Endgame show up. And then Ant-Man and Cassie are just surrounded by a bunch of dudes. And my guess is that perhaps this is a decimated part of Chronopolis. The Wasp wakes up from some kind of slumber, similar to how Sylvie woke up after she got pruned, which, again, another Loki Easter egg. I'm probably just going, like, all too wild out here, but it appears as though she's underwater because we get some coral and eggs. Like, little fish eggs. So, I mean, maybe she's in a part where those giant caterpillar things live. I think this is the wasp right here, and Hank are walking through this Chronopolian forest, but it has, like, a bunch of coral, a bunch of fungus, mushrooms, these tentacle things popping out of the ground. I mean, that that's a pretty interesting world, if you ask me. And they're with Janet here. So, the whole family's together. And then this is Janet, pardon the lighting, and she says it's a secret universe beneath ours. And this is insane! Because you have the end of Loki, when all of the branches were just sprawling out, and... Now you have Spider-Man No Way Home with, like, a whole bunch of other universes, and then what if, and now this, a universe within a universe? I mean, we are talking, like, twice the amount of universes now that there are. I mean, holy cow! I mean, it's just mind-blowing, and I can't understand the whole scenario, and I would try, but I just, I can't. And now this is crazy world building because we have a bunch of portals and they kind of look like the portals from like Han Solo when the Millennium Falcon's flying through the storm and we have like a bunch of these crazy things. We have like these little lanterns on tentacles, this girl at some kind of like table or sink, maybe she's like a quantum farmer or something, and we have these two donkeys with slug faces and a bunch of like these little purple grain stalks. I mean, I have no idea what that is. And then sticking comets start shooting out of the storm! And that's gonna have to be a wrap for this one. Sorry, guys. I'll do part two when I can. I don't know whether or not it's going to be today, but I mean, hey, anything can happen. So, uh, respect for all you guys out there. Peace out, and I hope that you guys have enjoyed this trailer breakdown as much as I have. And... If you want to, leave a comment down below in respect of for Pig Hambone. See you guys.